I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure that the door is closed so that the kids ain't like, what's porn, dad? <laughs> make sure door is closed talking about porn. <laughs> I'm texting our nanny because that would just, my mind, I heard them. I was like, oh, yeah, no. Go ahead. Okay. I'm yeah. so sorry. Okay. Because you're really having a testimony service and I just keep interrupting you. Yeah. So uh, it's all good. Yo, what's up with y'all? <laughs> what up? Remember uh, Big Tick in the basement? That's what I... I, uh, that I, was, my head. I wasn't ready <laughs> for that. What's good? What's good with it, son? I used to love that show. Rap City was... I used to watch it when I came... Because I felt like there was What was a, better? Rap City or 106 Park? They, they were different I'm things. saying, though, if you had to pick one, They what were was different things. Rap City was rappers. 106 in Park was everybody. I so know what I'm saying. If you had to like... If, say, if, if BET said one has to go I refuse your, to submit com- to this kind of like competition but Jackie thing. is so difficult. It's not difficult. That, like that's, your, that's like you asking me donuts... Or Peach Cobbler. I love them both. I know you love them both, but I I can't make them go to war. I can't choose sides. So so if God came back and said, I'm taking uh you got I'm I'm either take Peach Cobbler or Donuts away. I don't think God would ever come back and I distinct know, it's a, oh what my the, all, he's going to separate the goats and the sheep, not donuts from cake or pie from ice cream. That's what this you're doing. The, this is the reason why our eight nine year old is so like she doesn't get sarcasms like actually dad um uh pigs don't fly they don't have wings they have legs it's like oh well we're not having a conversation about sarcasm i know you I, ask I, I'm, I'm just saying I'm, what, what i'm saying is she's i have the proud. i have the right to answer your question on my terms so you're not gonna you're not gonna say what, what would you take take away 106 of parker rap city that's not what you asked me you asked me which is better which, which which is better? I'm saying, if, if, and I'm saying, if somebody said bo- they both had their place. I don't want to talk to you anymore, <laughs> Kim. You're behind the camera. You I'm you remember 106 it. in Park and Big Ticket Basement? If somebody gave you a choice, right, right? No, 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 Kim. Put the uh, app. Shall I put the camera on Kim? Put the camera on Kim. Put the camera on Kim. Because Jackie just just she she blowing me. Look. look if somebody said you got to take away one, one hundred six a park or big ticker, well, you had to. Which one would you take away? Which one you couldn't live with? One hundred six in park is a classic. So okay. Thank you, Kim. No, thank you. Oh, so you just want somebody to agree with you? <laughs> no, not not agree. I'm just saying. I just I I want it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you didn't like Not Bow Terrence. Wow and uh, Terrence and Roxy. Okay. I like Terrence and Roxy. I, I, that stage was not a thing for me. Wait. And I was, I was growing up. Did y'all know, though, that AJ's dreads was fake the whole time? No, they were not. Yes, they were. No, they were not. They were fake. Who the, told you that? I literally saw a video on TikTok of I don't behind that. the scenes. I'm going to pull it up right quick. I'm going to pull it up. That was a wig the whole time. I don't time. believe it. I'm finna pull it up. We gonna pause this right quick. I, I know fake locks when I see it. Ooh, the, I said AJ 106 in Park, and the first thing that popped up was fake dreads. What's your source? <laughs> What's your source? No, 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 no. Seriously, it's not a source. It's a video. That he, is. He sh- look. He shows. He shows. He, he showed his process after every 106 in Park of him taking off his dreads. I don't believe it because that that how do we know that that was during the taping of 106 Park? Because he he like on a longer video that I saw, he talked about how exhausting it was to take off his dreads after every single 106 yeah, Park. I had to confirm Look. when I get up because that easily could be a misrepresentation where he actually had fake dreads after he cut his hair off. Let's be clear, that doesn't prove that that was actually during the taping of 106 Park. Look, I don't they, think they are fake. Do they look real right here? They look kind of real. Do you see the edges, bro? And it, that's because that's they, a Tyler Perry wig. That man already, had real locks. Go look at that man. That man had real locks. Okay. But he is a little chubby he, in this video. Like, unless he said, y'all be watching a YouTube video just because they said it, you just you just go with it. 
Hey man, if that's it what, ain't come out that's what he said. He said he when, said in he said in the video. He said it was exhausting. In that video? No, no, no. In the in the longer video, because that was a video of, of of somebody just showing like a speed process him taking it off. He said it was exhausting taking the dreads off after every one hundred and six and park. That's what he said. Yeah, we'll see. All right, so we're supposed to be talking about porn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what we're here for. We're we're not here for the wigs. We're here for the the vids. You know, tell us a little something. Uh, so we released a, a podcast. Our first podcast episode actually was about uh, pornography. The recording of it is so raggedy. I wouldn't even want people to go back and listen to it. But if because we if recorded in our closet, no, in the hotel room. Oh yeah, it was in a hotel. It room. was a hotel room that. with a Yeti mic and just nothing and i the lord is so faithful to use our 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 meager attempts at being you know podcasters <laughs> and all the things and then we did a video on youtube repeating that story but in a more beautiful way and the story was basically Preston was watching some porn i found out about it <laughs> <laughs> on eden's fifth birthday it became like a whole thing but it was really good for would I, can I say it was good for our marriage? Yeah, I think it I was. I think trials, are they refine a marriage. Um, and so I don't want to say good, but I think it was a it was a mountain God that, we, that God used to teach us how to move others. Um, and so the other day, what was this? A month or so ago, you was like, I haven't watched porn in three years. Yeah, July 15th will be my third year anniversary of being I, I feel like free from pornography yeah how does that feel man um it feels great you know um you know it's just a, a testament to how much god is a keeper mm. he, he really is a, a keeper and also too like it's some things that it's some sins that you find yourself falling in that you at in the moment you feel like you're never going to be delivered from that from that thing mm -hmm. if you feel like it has so much of a hold on you mm. that you can't let it go um and it wasn't until god allowed you know uh, a lot of situations in my life to kind of just compile on top of one another where i really felt almost at that my wit's end to just give it to jesus you know but it feels great um even looking back doing this podcast with you right now and knowing that that was our first podcast how many years ago was that was that five mm -mm. four maybe i four? don't know how many kids did we have i think we had two. one yeah. two i don't know yeah i don't know we got a lot of kids <laughs> but that was our first podcast you know um and that was the first time i was comfortable enough talking about it to the public but even since then, God has allowed me to go through so much and he's done so much in our marriage. He's done so much in my individual walk with him. And um, yeah, it just feels good to look back at the time and say, man, like, like God, even then you were sanctifying me, you were cleaning me, mm -hmm. you, you know, and God didn't give up on me. Mm -hmm. You know, he was patient with me. Um, and, and I think it's just a testament to, to to know that if you if you really want to please the Lord and if you run to Him for help, He'll He'll help you and He'll sustain you. I'm curious. Well, I, I can suspect that somebody would be curious about how, like, how have you been able to to resist that temptation? Because it's not like the temptation went away. It's not like this is you know yeah. porn conversion therapy where you don't want to watch it anymore. So, so what I'm, happened? I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be just real because the first podcast I was just real honest. My mama heard it. She was like, "Wow, that was a lot." <laughs> <laughs> the first podcast that we did about porn, I I I feel like God in His kindness showed me how much it affected you. Showed me how much it hurt Him, and I was broken that I that I sinned against God. I was broken that I sinned against my wife. Um, but I still fell into porn after that. Right. Right. Which is the reason why it's a three year anniversary. And that was like four years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I honestly think our first podcast was like six years ago. Six years ago. It might be. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Um, and so, you know, I, I wasn't a slave to it like I was, um, but I had some some moments, and I what I what you know that I that I slipped and I and I watched it or whatever, and it was like 
I hope this makes sense, but after God dealt with my heart about how much it affected him and how much it affects my marriage and I love him and I love you, I didn't really meditate on how much it was damaging to me. So Preston, pornography is not an easy topic to talk about. Nope. It's awkward, it's uncomfortable, but I think we have to talk about it because yeah. it's something that's affecting people. Sure. It's affecting marriages, it's affecting uh, churches, it's affecting families, all the things. Husbands, pastors. Everybody. Yeah. And so that's why we want to talk about Covenant Eyes, which is a software program which Christians have been trusting for a long time to help people hold themselves accountable when it comes to pornography. I yeah. think you're familiar with it. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I think Covenant Eyes is a good app to use to hold you accountable. It also gives you the opportunity to invite other men and other women in it to do it with you, right? And so every time you're on your your phone, uh, it's a consistent reminder not to visit a, a, a app that dishonors God. And so I think it's just a good way of, one, inviting community to share this burden with trying to defeat porn. Because real accountability is not just people calling you out on your sin, but calling you up to the person of Christ. Amen. So for the saints, anyone can get started on their path to recovery for free by visiting CovenantEyes.com and using the promo code Perrys, P-E-R-R-Y-S, for 30 days for free or by clicking on the link in the show notes today. That's CovenantEyes.com and be sure to use the promo code Perrys. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure that the door is closed so that the kids ain't like, what's porn, dad? <laughs> make sure door is closed talking about porn <laughs> i'm texting our nanny because that would just my mind i heard them i was like oh yeah no go ahead okay i'm yeah. so sorry okay because you're really having a testimony service and i just keep interrupting you yeah so uh it's all good um so yeah i i think at first you know, I realized God made it like painfully obvious how much it, it grieved him and how much it affected you in my marriage. And because of that, I, I had really godly sorrow and I felt convicted. I mean, we remember the time. And if you've been rocking with this podcast a long time, I, I think you guys remember, remember that time. But I don't think that I, even in that time, meditated on what it, what it was doing to me mm. personally. Mm. Like how much it was affecting my mind, how mm. much it was affecting my heart. I think even when I released that 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 first episode, uh, it was like, man, porn destroys marriages. P porn, um, God hates it because it's the you know and all of this stuff. But like I hadn't you know, and so I was at that time I was really focused on God and you and my family and not wanting to throw my marriage away because of, you know I can't get over this thing. But God, but God had to make it personal, mm. personal to me, mm. right? And to be quite frank, God, over the course of a couple of years of just me falling back into it, he had to slap my wrist a couple of times to tell me, no, this thing is demonic. Mm. It is literally antichrist, right? Um, you know, and, that, and I think that if we think about porn in that way, I'm, I'm discipling a young man who's been, you know, married not for a very long time. And, you know, he had a similar struggle. And I love how God uses the things that we go through. And then he sends the exact people in our lives mm. to, to help walk them through certain things. Yeah. It's like, man, I've been there. Yeah. And one of the things that, you know, he loves to do is he loves to study about how Jesus went to evil places and places where they did witchcraft. And he was so bold and so courageous and how evil these places are. And he talks about all of the witchcraft that's happening in Atlanta now, and it's like, bro, if you really pay attention to it, mm. but pornography is just as demonic as these places. It is just as evil. Mm. If we can, if God can unveil our spiritual uh, eyes, our natural eyes, and allow mm. us to see in the spirit, and we saw how many demons are behind mm. pornography, we would run from it. Mm. It would not be appealing to us, mm. right? And so I started to have one, just very demonic dreams. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I know some some people feel weird about dreams, but, you know, I, I think God gives people dreams of just not, you know, I, I don't believe that God gives us anything that will add on to his revealed, finished work, work of God. But I do believe that God gives personal uh, revelation to, to people, you know, especially if he doesn't want us doing a particular thing. And I just be, begin to have these very dark dreams about like demons and just like 
evil when it comes to just sexual perversion. Why do you say pornography itself is demonic? Because it's, one, I, I believe that all perversion is linked to the devil, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that that's the devil's plan from the beginning to pervert what God has made, mm -hmm. right? And so, but it's also demonic because God created sex. Mm. He created marriage. He created a woman's body, right? And for us to um, engage in activity that that completely goes against the nature, the design, and the character of God, but also mocks God, mm. right? Satan, ju Satan just doesn't want to, um, um, you know, we have to look at it like this, right? Satan wanted God's glory like he wanted he he wanted to reign like right? he 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 wanted to for people to worship him right and he lost that fight when jesus defeated him death sin and the devil in, in the grave or whatever and so now we are god's living temple like 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 our temple is 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 how the world sees god right mm -hmm. and so if, if 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 we are a representation of the god in heaven his people how much more does the enemy want to mock mm. God's creation? Mm -hmm. And so one, one of the things that God showed me is that, no, like, it's not just evil because it goes against the nature of God, but it's literally Satan mocking bodies mm. and sex mm -hmm. and marriages. It's like, it's, it's, it's a slap in the face to God. And, it's, and so I guess I'm trying to say God just revealed to me that it's so evil. Mm. It's so demonic. Mm. And the devil delights in it. And so I didn't really see it that way. I didn't see it. I didn't see it like no. Like every single time I'm engaging in this, it's like the devil laughing at me. Like, look at what your creation is doing. Mm -hmm. Look at these beautiful bodies you created and you thought of before they was formed into their mother's womb. And look at him looking at a woman being degraded and being treated like trash. Mm -hmm. Like, like. And so we have to understand the 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 demonic nature behind them mm. at all. And so like I think when we think about it like that, I think then we will see that porn is evil. Yeah. It's evil. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so like for me, when I started to meditate and God started to show me that, it was like, no, it's more than just you making your wife mad or you making your wife feel uncomfortable or I don't like it and yada yada yada. It's like, no, no, no. You have to understand what it's doing to you. It is warping your mind. Mm -hmm. It is destroying your spirit. You're angry every single day. You're mm -hmm. not a good father because you're ingesting demonic things. Mm -hmm. Right? Does that make sense? Did, when you were when you were when you would engage with pornography, did you see it as that deep? Even in the in the moment, you know what I mean? So for you to say you're angrier or your fatherhood is being affected by it. Is that something that you saw in hindsight or was that something that you were actively experiencing where you was like, I think this is messing with my brain or my soul? No, 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 I didn't because I, one thing I learned about the enemy and God, they both, like the enemy works how God works, but he just works in a perverted version of that. Oftentimes God wants to impact us over a course of time. And, but the, pa the devil was patient too. And so what I realized is watching pornography, you know, over a course of time, I started to see that, you know, I wasn't affectionate for the things of God no more. Mm. I wasn't as patient with you when it came to our sex life. I wasn't as patient with my kids. It, it like, right, because I think what porn does, porn wants us and expects us to have right now results, right? It doesn't even, it gives us a false version of, of how God is even wants us to interact with human beings. Mm, you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of times when men watch porn, they see men who don't have to have patience, mm. who don't have to be long-suffering, who don't have to uh, uh, treat a woman with, with dignity and respect and honor, um, who, who a woman who doesn't say no to them, right? And so when I it, it started to affect my relationships because I think porn... It does a lot of things, mm. but I think it unknowingly gives you a self of entitlement. It's like, man, I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm watching an activity of men who are not being rejected at all and having women, to be quite frank, be used as doormats, I unconsciously bring that into my relationship with my wife. Mm. 
I unconsciously, and so like it is more, it is it it is psychologically. We have to understand that the enemy just doesn't want us to be freaks. Mm. He wants to psychologically like affect the way we interact with other humans. Mm. And when you see a human not being like, pornography is not even human. Yeah, it is. Un, it is inhumane. Yeah, right. And 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 that, that's that's one of the reasons why I feel like it's so demonic. Right, because the enemy wants to affect many relationships using it. It's mm. so it's so demonic. I think something you said earlier, and that I also keep hearing, is how like there's some the, pornography degrades the female body, mm -hmm. um, but it also degrades the, the male body. Yeah, um, because we were in Vegas the other day, and you we saw an exchange that looked like a prostitute got out of somebody's car and there was like, you know, a transaction and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think you said something about her, like something about her, like, man, I hope she realizes that she's worth it and some, 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 some. And I was like, I hope he does too. Yeah. Because I do think that we as a culture and as a society and rightfully so have put a lot of energy into making sure that young girls and women know that they that they are worthy of honor mm -hmm. and worthy of dignity, but I don't know how much intentionality that we've put into knowing, like teaching boys and men that your body is worthy of honor too. Yeah, because you also degrade yourself. So yeah. it isn't just I'm degrading this woman; I'm also degrading me. Yeah, and I think that's that's one way you're saying it's like no, nah, like I am actively being affected. Yeah, by this participation yeah and I don't, I don't i think that for a lot of men it probably doesn't feel like a degrading of the body because pornography teaches a lot of men that we should have a position of power mm -hmm. um and a woman is just there to to do everything we want her to do uh but it is it, it is god create like anytime you operate outside how how god created you your body is being misused mm. You are you are being missed used. That's deep. Even if you're the one who's doing it. Right? Yeah. And so, like, if we were created for God and God created us for his glory, and, and this is the reason why sleeping with multiple women will never satisfy us. Because it is also, uh, you know, and so, like, I, I, I say this all the time, but people always ask me, you know, how how is it being married to a woman that used to be gay? You know, and we've talked about this. I think we said it on the podcast at least two times, but nobody nobody says, like, Jackie, how is it married, mar being married to a man that used to sleep with a, a, a bunch of women mm -hmm. or, or, or watch porn? And we have to understand. A harlot. Right. Is have, harlot feminine? I don't know. But we have to understand or that pornography pornography is also a form of perversion it is it is it's it's perversion yes it is right and it's also not natural yes it, it is literally not natural for men to sleep with multiple women what if so there's a lot of content online that says that monogamy is like a a construct right and that like it actually is natural for the man to one have sex but also have sex with as many women as he would like like what is your defense i don't yeah so one um just biblically right we see one we see that 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 being eliminated when we see creation right god created one man right adam and he took eve from adam's rib and he told them to be fruitful and multiply, right? And so he put them in a garden, told them to guard it, yada, yada, yada. And we see that he established uh, marriage from the beginning. One man, one woman. And one, he, he says in, 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 the, in, the, uh, uh, in the New Testament that, that a man should leave his, his mother and father and cling to one woman, right? Ephesians Even, 5. Ephesians 5, mm -hmm. right? Even the qualifications of an elder is that he is, that he should be able to be the head of one wife, right? Mm -hmm. Not multiple wives. And so consistently over and over in the scriptures, we see that marriage is, is designed for one man and one woman. But also too, that, that, that God just doesn't give us rules and he doesn't reveal the practicality of those rules, right? And the logic behind those rules. Because if we look at, um, just society and baby mamas and um, how you know m having multiple women and 
having kids with those multiple women and, you know, and how much heartbreak and disease and all of this stuff comes from it. We see that that's not God's design. Mm. Um, not only that, I, I think I said this before, I can't remember, but uh, my my uh, cousin who's a chemical, chemical lab scientist, she literally says that every single day the most common disease is for people who don't like, I don't mean to be nasty, but she has to like look at the liquids of people's vaginas, penises. She looks at feces and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And she says this common disease that women get, and it's not any sexual transmitted disease. It is a common disease that they get from having multiple sex partners. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, why, why, why is this this common um, disease? It's, it's, it's not chlamydia or nothing. She was like, no. She was like, the body was not made to have multiple sex partners, mm -hmm. it was made to have one, and so I I don't know the, the 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 phrase or the or the name of the actual bacteria that 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 forms inside of a woman when she has multiple sex partners, and even a man that when he have multiple sex partners. But I believe that we were created to be with one woman. We were not created, and so I think this is the reason why there are so many broken families, so many broken homes, so many people with fatherless, you know, homes because we are operating outside of the way God created us to operate. And so, you know, I, I do think that God's design is the best design, mm. you know, and I think that porn just emphasizes this fact that no, that if we're a man, we can go out and sleep and have many sex partners as we want. But it's like, that's why our disease is rampant. Mm -hmm. That's why broken homes are such a thing. That's why kids grow up not knowing who they are mm -hmm. because they don't really know who their father is because his, his time is stretched with so many different kids mm -hmm. and so many different, you know, things. And so I really think that God's way is proven to be the best way. I just wanted to read something briefly just about the dignity of the body um, as it relates to sexual immorality, which is 1 Corinthians 6. God cares for the body, that one. Yeah, and like the Lord has a purpose for the body. Like he he's designed it for a reason. Mm. And it says, uh, verse 13, uh, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? Uh, I'm going to fast forward. So verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple, a church, a cathedral of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were brought with a price. So glorify God in your body. I think for a long time when I would read this text as related to like homosexuality and stuff like that, I would read it negatively. Yeah. Like the body is meant for the Lord, not meant for sexual immorality. And that's true. You could read it with that kind of emphasis. But I, I started to read it differently where I was like, oh, man, God is saying that this body is so valuable to him mm -hmm. that he's actually going to resurrect it one day. Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to enter into new Jerusalem or the new heavens and the earth disembodied. We're not going to just be spirits floating around, yeah. but God gave us a body and God is going to resurrect this body and God is going to glorify this body. And on earth, this body is a temple, yeah. a church, a building foot with the holy spirit like so god cares mm -hmm. about the body yeah. and he wants us to share that same concern yeah yeah that's good that's really good you know so i think when you say you know what it was doing to you as a individual with a because your mind is a part of your body yeah your eyes are a part of your body yeah it's all we're all it's everything is interconnected like like what affects us mentally will affect us physically, will affect us emotionally, will affect us spiritually. And that's one thing that I had to to learn that, man, like the way I'm starting to see relationships, the way I'm starting to see God, the way like it affects everything. And so like if I'm ingesting something that is completely unnatural, completely outside of the way God is, has has designed it, like this, my my mind started to become warped and I couldn't think right. And it's crazy that when I felt like God broke that thing, you know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was a, maybe in a later podcast, I'll talk about more in depth, you know, and you know, 
some of the things that God allowed to happen and be like, man, this is crazy. Um, like when I felt like, like God kind of freed me from some things by showing showing me myself, showing showing me my neediness, I felt like my mind felt clear. Mm-hmm. I felt lighter. I felt, and what what that showed me was like like I was in bondage, and I didn't even know that I was in bondage. Mm. Like you can be in chains for so long yeah. that you forget what freedom feels like. Yeah, and it's like wow. Yeah, I feel lighter with my children. Yeah. I feel more free with my wife or whatever. And an, and another thing is, I think pornography, especially in marriage, wants us to. Um, slowly but surely build up this level of discontentment doesn't want us content mm, mm-hmm. with our with our with our wives with our spouses and vice versa not just with women but don't don't want men um, don't want women to be content with their husbands and so i, I was going to talk about my relationships not even realizing why, why i was irritated mm-hmm. at times it's because i'm watching something i'm vicariously living through men mm-hmm. who 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 are operating in this perverted version of intimacy right and i can't even enjoy real intimacy with the one god gave me yeah right and so it was just it was just overall just kind of like warping my mind you you we might have said this before but i feel like this might be helpful what will you say to the people who said i understand what you're saying but this is actually keeping me from adultery like watching this is keeping me from cheating on my wife i'll say it is adultery okay you're not you're not you're not not a being a, an adulterous person mm-hmm. because you're not sleeping with a physical body. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the reason why Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look on a woman with lust. This is the reason why it says in the Bible that if you look on a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart, mm-hmm. right? And so it is unfaithfulness, mm-hmm. right? Um, to, to, to lust after things in that way that that you know that's not your spouse right and so it it it, it is you know um it's is it is it is it as damaging as going out and sleeping with a physical woman would it hurt most women more if you actually did that yeah right. sure right but one I, I think that we have to look at it adul- just because our wife don't, might not see it as adultery mm. we shouldn't think about our wives but we should think about the lord mm. that should be our primary thing and god says in his eyes you're committing adultery mm. so that's that's one um secondly i think that um you have to understand what it does to you mm. like what we we're just talking about mm-hmm. because if like my my thing was even after we did the podcast, the reason why I fell back into it, mm-hmm. and you didn't catch me, I confessed it, right. and I told you, right? Is that the reason why I fell back into it? Is because I hadn't meditated on how much you no know, Preston God cares. But that scripture you just read, I mm-hmm. love that scripture. I put it in my poem, Necrophiliac. Mm-hmm. Like, like I had to realize that God cared about me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. God cares about you. Mm-hmm. Like He loves you. Mm-hmm. You're worth it. You're more. You you you're more than pornography mm. right you're you're getting something a cheap version of what you can really experience in christ you're, you're experiencing a, a perverted version of what god want to give you in your prayer closet mm. Mm. and that's what i had to realize it's mm. like man when i started to get up every single morning and pray with the lord it's like no this is what i've been longing for wow i, I was longing for intimacy wow i'm getting emotional yeah i was longing for intimacy mm. i was longing to 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 be filled mm. you know and 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 so more than like well, i won't say more it hurt the lord it hurt you but i didn't even meditate on how much it was affecting me mm. mm-hmm. and god had to show me no i care how much you're being affected wow i care how much you're being like like torn down and how much you're and how and how, how much you're not being able to be a, a father to eat it in autumn and how much you're not it, it, I gave you a marriage to enjoy and pornography is in the way of that. Mm. I want you to experience the fullness of life, but you're 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 you're, you're so impatient with 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 uh sanctification, you're 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 running to a cheap carbon copy that's actually destroying you and all the blessings that I gave you. And so, like, I had to, I had to realize that what I was actually searching for was at my feet the whole time. Wow. So I, I, I think that's what we have to understand. When we, when we commit adultery with pornography, 
we we actually cheat on ourselves before we cheat on somebody else. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, we cheat ourselves out of out of life and out of peace and out of real joy. I don't know what else to say. All right, peace. No, we're not done. Oh, okay. I thought we was going <laughs> to... <laughs> you got emotional. It was like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. I don't want to. But I didn't. It didn't fall. No, I saw that. You no, saw... you was holding. You was holding on. Yeah, I'm a G. No, you was, you was you was right? keeping them them tears. I up didn't there. have to do this. I said, go back in. No. <laughs> I punk my tear. Y'all didn't hear it, but I punk. I said, but if you come on, I I knock you out if you fall in front of all these people. I don't know these people on YouTube crying in front of them. That was sweet though. Huh? We needed to see that. I got a little emotional. You did. Yeah, because I think that perspective is so helpful. Um, to st- it's just such a different thing for somebody to say, "Stop watching porn. Stop sinning. Stop doing this." That like that that has its usefulness. I, I, like, do not. Yeah, like there are imperatives in scripture, right? Don't do this. Yeah. But I think the motivation is don't do this because God loves you. And he wants more for you. And something that I kind of heard underneath everything is that I was thinking about how uh, the Bible says that the, the the Lord is the Lord of hosts. He's a fighter for his people. Mm-hmm. And there's a sense in which the Lord is fighting for you in the way that he's trying to sanctify you. Because it's like, he's like, nah, if you're mine, Satan can't have you. Yeah. Right. And so like, if that's the case, then I'm going to even fight by like, convicting you or stirring you up or yeah. giving you situations where you can be free from this thing mm-hmm. and like that's like that like i feel like that's an extension of his protection yeah you know what i'm saying yeah because i because god is such he's a father right and he's a friend and he, mm-hmm. and so like a real friend wouldn't allow their their friend to indulge in something that that like even if like it, I, i'll look at it like this like i had some family members or whatever that i knew like the person that they was with was using them. They were so infatuated with this person, but because I loved them, I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. using you, sis. He yeah. don't love you, yeah. right? You're going to end up being heartbroken. And I think God does that a lot mm. with the vices that we run to. Mm. It is not him just being some God in heaven who's just trying to be a bossy, like, I, I don't like it, so I don't want you to do it. Mm. No, God is like, no, I don't want you to do it because it's destroying you. Mm. Mm-hmm. You don't realize how much you're decaying on the inside, mm. but it's this, and I want to, pre- I'm here to preserve you. Yeah. And so I, I love God because he's such a loving God in that way that we will sin against him and he still will fight to show us how much not, not he's showing us not, it's not only offensive to him, right? That's the primary thing, but it's offensive to him because he created us for himself. Yeah. Yeah. He loves us. He cares about us. And so I had, I really had to like realize that. And so when I when I started to realize that, I was like, you, you know, porn, is, it's just not worth it. Hmm. And so now I want to encourage men, right, to, to know how I feel about porn now, right? And to know that you can feel this way too. Because when God first tapped me on the wrist with porn, I had to fight, right? to not watch it right i i I would i would fall into it i repent and i know a lot of men who who listen to this podcast probably say man i fell into it and i have to go back and repent repent but if you consistently like submit that thing and give that thing to the lord god will show you how 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 um how disgusting it is Mm -hmm. right and i i think that when we realize how much something is when we truly realize how something is how offensive something is to a holy and righteous god now porn for me it's so unattractive Mm. i don't want to be arrogant and say for the rest of my life i won't be tempted to ever type in something on on my phone but for me it is literally almost like it is the definition of returning to vomit Mm. because i see it as that demonic Mm. and that was over a course of years of god revealing to me no this thing is dangerous Mm. to you Mm -hmm. it is disgusting Mm. it is it is it is decaying you from the inside out and so like i I, like now i see it in that way and so i think that if you really want to be set free from porn i think a good prayer is for you to ask the lord god show me how much this is damaging me Mm, mm -hmm. truly reveal to me how much this thing is killing me Mm. right how much the enemy is trying to kill not just me but generations 
He wants to not just affect me, but he wants to affect my son and my son's son and my daughters and my daughter's daughters, right? He wants to affect the way I father so my kids will father in trash mm-hmm. ways. Like he wants to, like, it, like, like when you invite something so unclean Oof. and so demonic mm-hmm. and so perverted into your life, you have to understand the devil is playing for keeps. Yeah. Right? But what you, what you experience on the surface is never what you, what's is happening. what's happening. Yeah, yeah. It is so much spiritual implications of what like we have to understand that if we if 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 inviting God's purity and his righteousness and his holiness when, when we worship him, right, does something to our spirit, does something to our mind, does something to our whole being, inviting something that is anti-God into us does the opposite in the spirit. Mm-hmm. We have to understand, we have to look at it as that deep. Yes, it's spiritual warfare. Right? And so you just got like your your 10 minute fix when your wife went to the grocery store because you watch porn and you don't even know all of the spiritual implications that that the that the devil just right when I started to meditate on that mm-hmm. I'm like oh <laughs> you want to oh you want to destroy my son yeah you want you want you want yeah like you you want you want to impact even the way I see humans so I so I so I so I can't be an effective father effective a husband right like the enemy is playing for keeps. Mm. Let go of that thing. Mm. Let it go. It is not worth it. it. It ain't worth it. Yeah. And so when I when I think about porn, I cannot think about the porn without thinking about all that first. And so I think that God, if we want help, God opens our minds to allow us to see things in the way He sees it yeah. more and more. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, that's the reason why I've been able to just say no to it for three years. And I want to just let people know, like, you know, doesn't mean I'm perfect because when the enemy takes things, well, when God takes some things out of your life, the enemy real good at offering some new idols. Yeah. You know, That's uh, a fact. but we got to fight. Yeah. We got to fight. Uh, would you mind praying for people listening who are struggling, wrestling and just feel they hear you, but they might not have faith to believe yet that like I can actually be free from this. So. Yeah, I want to just say this um before you know um I pray. I there's some there's some sins that we that we indulge in and that we commit that makes us feel really condemned. And the reason why is because there are some things like pornography, homosexuality, that it's embarrassing to confess those things. And so, especially if it has a hold on you, you know, it becomes harder to confess those things because you're embarrassed, right? So you can't run to it, yada, yada, yada. And so it's easy, right? And so when you became uh, aware of how much the thing had a hold on me, it became easier because I had an accountability partner that lived with me, right? And a lot of people just don't have that. And so I think the first thing that we, the first temptation is to run to shame. Right. But I love what Hebrews 4, 14 says. It says that seeing now that we have a great high priest, Jesus, the son of man who was passed through the heavens. It says, for we do not have a high priest who was unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who was tempted in every aspect, just as we are yet without sin. It says, therefore, come to the throne of grace with confidence that we might find grace and help in our time of need. And when I confessed, um, uh, when when I when the Lord laid it on my heart to make that be our first podcast, like six, five, six years ago, whenever it was, I immediately felt shame, right? I immediately felt like this self condemnation. But God had to remind me that because He's a God who just didn't sit up on His throne and watch us sin our whole life, but He's one who condescended and became a man, right? And He can empathize with my weakness. And so I want people to know that, man, maybe you're struggling with porn. And you don't have anybody to run to. And maybe you think that God is just tired of you. You know what I mean? God is not tired of you. God is not just some God who's, like I said, who set up on his throne and watched you sin your whole life. But he's a God who became human like you. And so because he became human like you, there is unlimited grace for you at his throne. And so I say that because pornography a lot of times can become this repetitive sin. And we feel guilty every single time we watch it. We feel guilty every single time we watch it. Guess what? God will never say, it's you again. Mm -hmm. He will never say that. 
He will always welcome you back. And that's one thing that I had. And I want to say this because that's one way the enemy be getting people. He wants you to get tired of running to the throne. God ain't never going to get you. God ain't never going to be tired of you running to the throne. He's yeah. always going to accept you. Mm. And so never get tired of running to God's throne because, like I said, he became human like you so he can empathize with you. Yeah. Right? The second thing is, it says in this passage, he was without sin. So though he was human, he knows what it, he knows what it feels like. And he knows what it means to be perfect mm. and so that he can help you. And so this is the reason why at the, at the end of the verse it says you can find grace and help there, mm. right? And so run to Jesus. Do not run to shame. Don't run to, to self-condemnation, but keep running to Jesus. And if you keep running to him over time, he will help you more and more and more. And so that's my testimony. I'm not strong within myself. Mm. I didn't stop running to Jesus to yeah. help me. Yeah. Right. And so I want to encourage people with that. And so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Father, for um this podcast. There's so many men and women uh, who struggle with pornography, um, who struggle with um reading things that's not pure, even looking at sensual things that's not pure, that's affecting their relationship with you, their relationship with their spouse, their relationship with their loved ones. And it's also affecting them. And so, God, I just pray, Father, that you and your kindness will remind them that you are a present help in their time of trouble, that you will never get tired of them running to you. I pray, God, that you will consistently convict us of sin and righteousness, Lord. I pray, God, for the person who is in bondage. I pray, God, that you will send someone, people in their life that they can talk to and confess sin to. I pray, God, that you um, will use this podcast, but also after this podcast is over, that you will reveal to your creation how much porn affects you and affects the heart of God and affects us, Lord. I pray, God, that you will show us your heart for us, that we would choose righteousness and holiness and real peace and real joy over the things that gives us temporary satisfaction. I pray, God, that you will Give us help, God, that you will send a present help, um, God, for the people who are currently struggling with this. I pray, God, that you will deliver marriages, God, the marriages that's, that's listening to this podcast. I pray, God, that you will encourage them and that you will strengthen them, that you won't allow wives who have husbands who struggle with this to take it personal, um, even though it is offensive and even though it is hurtful, but they will see it as a spiritual fight and not that they're not good enough that they're not women enough, that they're not um, more than enough for their husband, and even vice versa. I pray, God, that you would destroy the lies that pornography creates in relationships and that we will all see you for who you are. And in seeing you and who you are, we will see ourselves for who we are. Actually, Peace. You did that. <laughs>